I got one thumbs up, two thumbs up. Oh, okay, I got a lot of thumbs up. So okay, great. Thumbs. So many thumbs. Hi, y'all. Thanks for coming. I know it's the last session of the day, so it's uh, really close to happy hour slash dinner slash other obligations. So thank you all for being here. Um, oh, here we are. This is what we're doing. Um, uh, my name is Nikki. I started the Drupal Diversity and Inclusion Group two years ago after DrupalCon New Orleans, um, and we have... Oh, uh, that's okay. And we have been doing this conversation every year. Uh, we're going to do it a little bit differently this year. I'm just going to give a very, very fast overview of what we do. And then um, other members of the leadership team are going to take over, and I'm going to sit in the corner and shut up. Um, so the Drupal Diversity and Inclusion Group was started because we wanted to make Drupal a safer space for women, people of color, minorities, uh, people who are differently abled, people who are not neurotypical, all of the people who we don't see a lot of at DrupalCons. And that's specifically why we made it, um, and we've been working since then to make Drupal safer. And yeah, okay, just did that. Um, and here's all of the things that we're against. Here's a big long list that's not exhaustive um, of things that we, we are not racist, we're not homophobic, we're not sexist, we're not Islamophobic, and we think it's really important, um, and I'm gonna stop speaking for the group in a second as soon as I sit down. Um, we think it's really important to be explicit about these things. To not just say, uh, we want to treat people nicely, but to say, we are against racism. We are specifically anti-racist. We are specifically anti-sexist. We are specifically anti-Islamophobic. Um, and so that's some of the messaging that we're putting out and that we're trying to create in the Drupal community. OK, great. This is where I go sit down and let the rest of the leadership team talk about all the great stuff that they've done this year. This is the first year that we have a leadership team. Um, we realize that more people are better. And so we got a lot of smart people on the leadership team to do a lot of smart things this year, and we'll let them go from here. That's us. That's them. Me? Oh, well, like, do you want to do what? Well, and then we'll just intro. We'll just talk with the group. What are we doing? Saying our names? Oh, hi, my name is Fatima. I'm Sugar Overflow. I'll go sit now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tara. I'm Sparkling Robots. I guess I can do slide. Um, I'm just going to stand here. Okay, do it again. Hi. Mark Drummond. M. Drummond. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Alana Burke with an equally uh, unique username. It's a Burke 66 <laughs> And we also have Greg, who is GDD, Nat, who is Catch, and Ruby, Ruby G. Uh, where to find us online? Uh, DrupalDiversity.com or on Twitter, Drupal Diversity, or on Slack in the Diversity and Inclusion channel. It says it on the oh, it does. Oops! We have a new website. Uh, oh, and we're also on Drupal.org. Our project's called Diversity, which I think is really cool because when you, you know, uh, work in our issue queue and we give you commit credit, it comes up as diversity on your profile, and that's just the best <laughs> feeling ever. So I'm <laughs> just putting that out there. You should come to our meetings because for every meeting you attend, you post an issue in the meeting agenda, and we give you credit for it, so it shows up on your profile. Um, and we have meetings every Thursday in Slack at noon EST and 8 a.m. PST. Nine. Nine. I never get the time zones right. 9 a.m. PST. Uh, how to help. Don't think this has a slide. So um, how to help. Come join our meetings. Talk to us. Check out our issue queue. If that's not really your thing, just come to the meetings. Um, tweet. Check out our Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. Um, and do, do we want to say other things? Do you want to add anything? Yeah, contrib team. Yeah, um, we have a branch called DDI Contrib Team that was founded this year, maybe nine months ago. Um, I don't know if there's a slide, so I'm gonna go with it. Uh, we were started when Dries released his sort of state of the Drupal, I think something like that post, that was looking a lot at where contributions came from. And the focus of the post was not diversity. It was um, like corporate, versus non-volunteer contributions. And, and there was one sentence, I think, that said there were 2% uh, non-male contributors. And the uh, whole group had a lot of discussion about this. And we have since uh, formed a little branch of people who are working to increase code-based. And all, uh, as we go, all kinds of uh, contributions to the project from people in underrepresented groups. So if you're uh, wanting to mentor people or wanting to learn how to make your first commit or anything like that, get in, get in the channel, 
and help that way. It's a DDI-contrib-team on Slack. Do you want to take over? Is the announcer next? I think so. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is tag team. Oh, oops. <laughs> it's not my turn yet. Uh, we have lots of good stuff happening here in Nashville. I'm sorry that it's Wednesday, so some of this stuff already happened, but we're going to want to take credit for it anyway. Monday night, right, we had a game night. Tara ran it. Lots of people came. They played games. It was like a safe space and more or less an alcohol-free space. It was completely alcohol-free. Completely alcohol-free, which is really hard to find in conferences. Um, earlier yesterday, I gave a talk about ethics, so we're still like increasing the conversation about how to be ethical in technology. Earlier today, there was an LGBTQIA plus boff. Um, last night, there was a people of color and allies boff. There's another one today. Uh, there's an LGBTQIA social happy hour tonight at six. Uh, there's a religious minorities boff. When is that? I'm not writing it this year. Okay, I thought you might know when it was. Uh, but there is a religious minorities boff. Um, and almost all of these are new in the last couple of years, that they're officially on the schedule. So this is one of the things that DDI has worked to help the DA and Amanda and the program team do. They used to be organized organically by people, um, and we decided that it's good to have a set um, and designated space for them. So now the leadership team is going to talk about the stuff they've done this year. I'll jump in. Um, right after DrupalCon last year, inspired actually by Nikki's talk on 100 Ways to Be an Ally, which gave, I don't know, a lot of book recommendations, um, we formed a book club in Drupal Diversity. We read The New Jim Crow, we read a bunch of articles, uh, the Combahee River Collective Statement, and uh, Peggy McIntosh's uh, work on white privilege, and unpacking the invisible knapsack and other things. Oh, Twitter and Tear Gas by last year's keynote speaker. Um, we were having kind of a formal book club for four months that has kind of shifted into people giving book recommendations in the channel. We have a Goodreads group, if you're a Goodreads person, where people's recommendations mostly end up. So you can check us out on Goodreads if you want to see the kinds of things we're thinking and talking about. Um, I think that we, we wanted to start it again to just sort of elevate the level of discussion and self-education around topics of diversity and social justice. So I'm super excited about it and um, it's another place you could help. And then contribute team, which I already talked about. Expanded Nashville planning? Who wants that one? <laughs> so a handful of us from Drupal Diversity were involved in some of the governance conversations that happened this year. Um, we had a boff, or not a boff, a panel a couple hours ago right here in this room where we talked about a lot of that. Um, and I think um, a lot came out of that, although not as much as we would have liked. Um, there's still a lot of discussion to be had, especially around getting diversity and inclusion into that conversation and into those values and principles. Um, but it's something that we are very much aware of and very much involved in and very much working on because it's incredibly important um, and we are not going to give up um, and we're not going to let there be language that we don't think is strong enough. Um, as you know, Nikki had read earlier, like these are the things that we do not tolerate and we think that that kind of language is what needs to be in Drupal's values. It needs to be explicitly stated. Um, you know, for reasons that I, I don't even think need to be explained. Um, so that is something that we are just gonna stay very much focused on and not let go. <laughs> I can't see what the next one is. Did someone wanna talk about, I don't. Um, so throughout the year, we had a like different camp organizers come to our meeting and say, "Hey, like we we want to support diversity and inclusion. Should we have a boff? What what should be in it? What should we talk about? Or should we have sessions? Where should we tap into speakers for those sessions?" Um, so that was really great because we felt like you know in the meetings we had people come in and ask for help, and then all of our members kind of contribute to that. Um, and then for DrupalCon specifically, we had like DDI session help where we had people drop into this channel and say like, "Hey, I'm working on a talk." this is where I'm at, like maybe I'm brainstorming or maybe I already have my slides and people jump in and sort of help and mentor that person wherever they needed it in that process. So 
So, yeah. uh, so we, uh, like, I think earlier, uh, towards the end of last year, we decided we're going to move to Drupal.org. Um, we had a lot of feedback that people were having trouble, you know, contributing to our, Git, to our GitHub issue queue, and sometimes maybe we were training them to do that, and eventually we decided if we move to Drupal.org, then people who are going to contribute to our issue queue will be getting, you know, the practice of contributing to other issues on Drupal.org, and so maybe that's what we should be doing as sort of like a, a platform for people to, not like a, like a stepping stone for people to get started. Um, that was a really big <laughs> process and a lot of people pitched into that and I remember in our meetings we would have agendas and we'd be like here's a list of things that needs to be done before we can flip the switch and and people would be like oh and moving issues over copy pasting the summaries and and linking back to github and so that was really exciting um, and and another part of that that was really exciting was now we can give credit for you know people attending our meetings people helping moving our issues forward or like helping with things at Nashville, we had a bunch of issues for like the game night um, or, or you know, for the booth duty and I hope that we'll go back and we'll give people credit for that and it's really exciting to see that credit appear on the profile. And then we ran a Slack channel oh, to help, oh and, and then the Slack channel to help people plan DrupalCon sessions was the session help met slash mentoring that we did. I have big news. Uh, so one of the things that we have done consciously um, in DDI is the things that we wish the Drupal Association and the Drupal community did. So we make all of our decisions transparently. We give um, contribution credit for coming to meetings and doing emotional labor or non-technical labor. Um, we make mistakes publicly and then apologize for them. We tweet things honestly, sometimes with regret, but then we fix it. Um, basically, we just try to live publicly and transparently. One of the other things that we wish the Drupal Association and the Drupal community did was have a formal process for transitioning leadership. Uh, people should not be in positions of power for too long. Um, I think it makes things stale, and it makes things uh, seem as though that person is the most important thing when it's not. So DDI is not my project, DDI is a community project, and I don't want it to ever seem like um, that DDI wouldn't exist without me. So, starting effective now, Yay! Fatima is the new leader of the Drupal Diversity and Inclusion Group. Um, and so I'm just going to say, just real quick, that I think Fatima is one of the smartest, kindest, most engaged people that I've ever met in any community. And that not only Drupal, but DDI is super, I'm gonna try really hard to make her cry, that <laughs> Drupal is really, really lucky to have her. Um, and I'm gonna be transitioning out over the next year, it's not gonna be abrupt, I'm gonna support her, and I'm so excited to see how DDI as a community evolves under her leadership, which I know is gonna be stellar. Yay! Yay! Um, well, we want to stay involved in the governance process. We want to really push for that, and we can't be the only ones saying things, so we really want the people who come to our meetings to push for those things and post in that governance issue queue. Um, I think session help is a really great idea, and we, we can kind of expand on that and you know help people submit sessions and you know increase speaker diversity. I know Ruby's working a lot to improve the resources on our website um, and you know for people to be able to go there and look into that, and we have the contrib team doing this like accelerator program mentoring to get people comfortable contributing to CORE. Um, so a lot of things, a lot of contributions, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah. There's something I wanted to say when, oh, <laughs> a lot of work in progress and, you know, improvements. There's always room for improvement. Um, something I wanted to say earlier when Nikki was talking um, was that it, when I first came to this community, I think I was just like, I don't know what Drupal is. I don't know what's going on. Everyone was really welcoming. And I kind of didn't come for the code because I didn't know what the code looked like. Um, I just came to the con to figure out why I work was switching to Drupal and, and what I had to do to learn how to keep my job. Um, and then I came and everyone was amazing and, and I felt so welcomed and so I felt this community vibe and I was like, I haven't had that anywhere else. Um, 
And so I stayed, and uh, I remember being in a like diversity inclusion boff at New Orleans, and everyone was talking about you know how why they were there, and I started talking about like you know I'm so used to keeping my head down and and not speaking up and and just letting people say racist or Islamophobic things to me, and then and just letting it go because accepting that maybe that's just a part of my life and I have to deal with that. And that day I got emotional, and I think Yinky, you said something that like prompted me to keep talking, and then I just kept talking for like five minutes, and then I felt so empowered at the end of that, and I was like I just said all the things I should have said years ago but maybe I wasn't ready to say and all after that I just felt like I started getting platforms to talk and people started listening and for me that means so much because there's so many people who don't have the opportunities that I had and didn't meet the people that I needed that I met and weren't able to get those doors open for them so if I can be at a point where I have this power and I can do things um, and I'm gonna need people to help me along the way and I'm gonna make mistakes and that's that's all part of it um, I just want to say that like this is all new to me too, but I'm, I'm really excited about having a voice and I'm really excited to be able to say the things that maybe people who don't have a voice can't say. And, and that's sort of gonna be my focus, I guess, for the year. <laughs> How we can support those people that maybe don't know that we can support them because maybe they're so used to not being supported. So, thank you. <laughs> and if anyone else has plans for the next year. <laughs> I have plans for Friday. Um, we're gonna be, yeah, so Contrib Team is having a sprint on Friday in the Mentored Core Sprint Room. It's a little bit unconventional, but so far they haven't kicked me out. Um, and uh, one of the things that I was always frustrated with was um, there's this like, we have tasks for people who don't know how to code thing. We actually do, like you don't need a local environment. Um, you, if you can read and write, in English to some, you know, to whatever level. Um, we have tasks for you. We also have tasks for project managers. Um, we just adopted the gender field module. Um, yeah, that's exciting news, which uh, we need to port to Drupal 8. And I would like to work with the um, Open Demographics Project to use some of their stuff that they've been working on and kind of use the gender field module as uh, best practices sort of for user data collection. Um, around diversity issues. So that being said, I would love to have anyone there. Um, also, we need coders. It's not like we don't need those people too. But it's going to be an exciting day on Friday. So one of the things that came out of uh, our, our contrib team is that there was an effort to uh, for to have a new website for Drupal diversity and inclusion work group and uh, you know Ruby who's not here worked a ton on resources like getting like making that a great source for resources and I know a lot of other people worked on it um, but one of the th the great things that came out of it is uh, Kaleem Clarkson who who helped who's here um, as well as like Alex who's not here like made a huge effort. To, uh, to to help create a new website, and I'd love Kaleem to come up here and if you're if you're up for it to to talk a little bit about that. Thank you. Bonjour. <laughs> That's my French attempt. Yes. Yeah, so um, yeah, it was really exciting. I I just kind of was hopping around in Slack. I just love the fact that we use Slack, by the way, now because. I had no idea what IRC was. I just couldn't figure it out. Um, so yeah, I just hopped in, hopped in Slack, and uh, somebody was like, "Hey, we gotta build a new site." And um, you know, I, you know, I also run Drupal Camp Atlanta, so you know, I have some experience with with theming. And uh, um, as a as a sole person, so I didn't even really think of being on the DDI team as as really anything really, as far as just, hey, I, I'll help and. Um, I personally have never worked with a project manager. I, I work at um, a university, so I'm like a, a lone wolf. I've never just work by myself, so I've, I don't have anyone to work with. And um, Alex, the, this dude Alex is a machine. <laughs> like this guy's unbelievable. So I wish he was here, he, he couldn't make it, but he started making all these issues in the, in the issue queue. And um, you know, issue queue is kind of intimidating um, for all people, really. And uh, he was making all these issues, and then all of a sudden, he was like, hey, do you, you want to do this? I was like, yeah. And 
I got a chance to work with a project manager for the first time. I'm like, wow, somebody list all the things that you need to do and they just assign you to these things? <laughs> this is really cool. And like, you know, he had all the color codes on there. So um, in a weird, not in a weird way, but like basically the reason why you came up with this concept is to gain knowledge and gain experience for people who may not have that opportunity. And, you know, I my opportunity was just, the reason I don't have that opportunity is just because I'm, I'm a lone wolf in, in, in a shop and uh, well, at a university. And so I got a lot of experience working with him on like, you know, how to work with a project manager. And it was really neat. So basically I got mentored and, and I didn't, ex I didn't join it to be mentored. I was like, I just want to help and it ended up being a, a really cool, cool experience. So um, we're looking for people to help. Another Alex has volunteered. I'm really excited. So um, we got to work on the mobile side of it right now. It's kind of ugly when you're responsive. Um, we know that, so please just don't make comments over and over. We, <laughs> like, we get it. Um, so yeah, yeah, the, the site's it's really basic, but it's been a fun project so far. So hopefully I'll get more involved just from this and uh, we could use more help. So yeah. that's it. Yeah. So one of the things that I have focused on mostly is um, I helped create and solidify our moderation and participation guidelines, and I run um, sort of our moderation team. I'm like our lead moderator, and I also became the Slack admin so that I could really handle that. Um, you know, if in the event that we you know need to handle things. <laughs> But uh, one of the things that I really wanted to get off the ground um, that we haven't really was having a really solid moderation team so that we could, um, you know, there are times when our Slack gets really busy and there are people on 24 seven. Um, and in those events, I would really like to make sure that we have someone who's sort of on deck um, you know, 24 seven in the different time zones. And that's something that we haven't been able to do, um, especially in, you know, like non North American time zones. So I'd really like to have enough people who are interested, um, to make sure that, you know, at those times when our Slack is really busy, you know, I hate waking up in the morning and finding out that there was some like 3 a.m. drama on Slack, and now that's the first thing I have to deal with, and I haven't even had any coffee, and there are like 94 pings, and they're like, oh my god, Alana, did you see this? And I'm getting pings from all sorts of people. So, um, you know, I really enjoy moderating, and I enjoy making sure that it's a safe space, and I think it's so important, and I think we've made it so much safer, and we've even extended that out to some of the other channels in Slack, like through the Slack admin team, um, which is great, but, um, you know, I think having a larger team to work on that, and also to, you know, keep evolving our moderation and participation guidelines as needed um, is important. Did you want to, you were saying something? Oh, just that you're a badass? Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we need more people. Yes, and we just need more volunteers in general, I think. Um, you know, when it comes time to work on our, our booth and things like that, it's it's really helpful to just have more people who want to actively work on things with us. Just one thing I wanted to, to add to that was, um, I know I and, and probably a lot of other people got involved about a year ago uh, when there was <laughs> something going on. Um, there was a lot of difficult discussions and there's a lot of people who raised their voices and there was a lot of emotional labor that went into, you know, the Slack channel became a place where people would go to vent and to argue and there's a lot that went into it and there's a lot of people here who raised your voices. I think that's awesome and there's a lot of people who, you know, put a lot of time and effort into responding to some things that were really difficult. Um, and, and and supported each other. And I just want to thank everybody else for, for everybody who, who worked on that, because that was great. Um, so it's Thursday, so this isn't as relevant, but we did have an... It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> cool.
cool. It's Wednesday. If you haven't checked us out at the booth, we um, have our photo booth where we showcase what the different faces in the Drupal community look like. We have stickers. We have pronoun stickers, which are just awesome. And everyone should wear one, even if you're like cisgender like me, because that supports other people who may not feel as comfortable about revealing their genders. Um, we have information uh, in the form of postcards, which I generously passed out earlier. We did this thing at the back where it's like, here are some ways to just be an ally at the conference. Um, and the, the ways to be an ally? Oh, sorry. Um, oh, so the card I'm talking about for the recording, it says, be an ally at Drupal events, make eye contact, invite someone to join your conversation, consider a new perspective, and call out exclusionary behavior, which is my favorite. Um, and then we also have a sign up for dinner. We're doing a dinner Wednesday night and Thursday night. Um, we tried to do this, we, we wanted to do this program to create a safe space for dinner for people that may not want to go to a really loud bar to have dinner. And we kind of tried to, to, to vet uh, places that were you know, dietary friendly, accessible, maybe not too expensive. Um, and so there was a lot of work that went into that, a lot of crowdsourcing from the community, giving us locations, calling places to find out if we had to make reservations, et cetera. Um, and if you come to the booth, you get good conversation and friendly faces. So stop by. <laughs> We hope to see you this year. And contribution sprints are on Friday. Um, there's the mentored core sprint, the first time sprinter workshop, and the general sprint. Should I explain them? No, they don't. And it's not in Schultz, too, either. That, these are misprints from, from the get up. Uh-oh. Well, our slides are not correct, so if you're interested in sprints, check the website. Are they in every template? Yes. No, it, it, I, I have the picture for the, the post note. Like, the, the, the Schultz, too, was from last year. Apparently, the slide template uh, is copied from Vienna, so check the website for when the sprints are. These were the templates provided to us. <laughs> Uh-oh. This was totally default. As a track chair, I personally apologize for this. <laughs> uh, I, I think we, we should call out track chair participation in, from DDNRC. Oh, right. We did that, too. You do that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure if you're speaking, yeah, my yeah. I like holding this. Uh, this year for uh, DrupalCon, um, there were more participants in the track chair who were identified as women than ever, um, many of whom came from DD&I themselves. Um, and many of them were first time track chairs, so first time track chairs, all speakers of some degree. And I mean, DrupalCon's not over yet, so I don't want to like, you know, jinx us or anything, but I, I think there, there, there was a concerted effort, at least from Amanda Gonzer's side, uh, the program manager for, the, for DrupalCon, to change the tenor and theme of a lot of DrupalCon programming. And this year was probably the first step towards that, the first big decisive step towards that, with more changes to come in uh, uh, DrupalCon yet to be announced next year. But I, I'm, I, I, yeah, I'm really proud of a lot of people who came to the the, who joined the track team this year, they, uh, we, we, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know, I, I, didn't, I didn't have any prepared comments. I was just, I'm just really proud that this happened, and I think it, it was a force for positive change in the way that DrupalCon has always been. Well, so, so from, from in this room, Heather, Fatima, Alana, um, and, oh, and yeah, Sally. Kathy and Sally, um, yeah, served on the program team this year to help select sessions, which uh, it's a big deal. Um. I guess it's more than just more than just select sessions to uh, to to govern the, the themes of their tracks, oh, yeah. to invite speakers, to make sure that they were well supported, especially all the first time speakers yeah. that we had this year, which were quite a few, and um, sort of infusing the culture within the team so that it carries forward. Yeah, and I think having all of us on um, the track chair team really made a big difference. For example, we pushed for having a no all-male panels pledge, which I think worked out pretty well, and it also brought out some you know, some really good conversation on the track team where there were a couple of people who pushed back and we pushed back on that and said, you know, this is really, this is really important. This is something we should really work for. Um, and we had to sort of explain the difference between, you know, adding a token woman to a panel versus looking around and saying, you know, why would you put three men on a panel and why, why can't you find a woman to put on this panel? And if this was a project of all men, is this something that you want to put? 
um, on a panel and is this worthwhile? So um, I think that 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 wound up being a really important conversation that, that was had both on the track team and on Twitter and on Slack. So I just kind of want to, as a conference organizer, kind of, I don't know, comment on finding diverse speakers. Okay. Are we ready? Good, good, good. So, so last year at Drupal Camp Atlanta, I had an all white male panel, right? And my panel was called the Contrib panel. And it was impossible, it was very difficult to find a maintainer of a Contrib module that was from an underrepresented group. So one of the things that I would like to see out of this group, and I think what you've done so far is awesome, and I think um, we can always do better but as a camp organizer, we need resources. You know, we're doing this on a volunteer basis. You're doing all these things on a volunteer basis. And it's difficult to find these speakers. Sometimes in certain situations, it's almost nearly impossible. So I would love to see this group start looking at like, so for example, I don't know specifically like what are the the, the goals of the group specifically, and I like measurable, attainable goals. Like, I'm kind of a stickler like that. So I would love to, we talked about this in the channel, maybe potentially coming up with a, a speaker's bureau. I know that there could be some problems with that, but like, if we're trying to improve our speaker res representation, how can, we, how can we find these people? And the other thing is, is like, I love the makeup of this room, but I'm also curious, I've seen a lot of different people here at DrupalCon, and I'm actually curious as to why maybe some people aren't not in this room. So I just, I just wanna you know, just make that comment of, I would love to see some resources, I'd love to see some goals. Um, like how was the leadership team put together? Um, was there a voting process? Is there terms? I mean like, so just some basic things from like a nonprofit organization process that I would love to see. So that's it. Do we have any real takers personally taking some notes? You're now officially taking notes. <laughs> so Tara's taking notes. Um, and just real quick to answer your question about the leadership team. Uh, when we formed it, there just weren't that many of us. And we picked the people who were most involved kind of just right off the top. I think one of the things that w should happen this year is official terms and transparent selection process. What was your name again, last person who spoke? Colleen. Colleen. Um, Colleen, I love that you asked about speaker diversity because this is my passion. I'm giving a talk tomorrow at noon about this. And um, I'm from WordPress, and this is something that we're actively working on right now. And um, any cities who run the, the guidelines and the workshop that we've created have had huge diversity in the WordCamps, and I would love to help Drupal not have to um, start from scratch and reinvent the wheel, but I, you know, launch from the things that we've done and, and help you with that. I just want to comment real quick on speaker diversity. Um, you know, as a track chair, I pushed really hard to invite as many diverse speakers as I could. And one of the problems that I ran into that um, you know the program team is very well aware of is, you know, asking um, especially underrepresented groups to come oh, and do free labor. Say. Oh, sorry, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's hard. Um, you know, we don't pay our speakers here, and that's a really huge hurdle and it was very hard you know I had a lot of people who said hey um, I would come except I'm not going to come do free work for you and <laughs> and so that is just sort of one one major problem that we need to fix here um, Wait, you Wait, you oh, okay. Wait, Wait, sorry I didn't want to jump yeah I'm sorry I just want to say, uh, oh, okay. one thing I want to try to do is stop talking about all of us underrepresented groups are poor, because that's not the case. Well, it's no, it's not. Like about what I'm saying is, is like I, I, I get the point, but like there's a, there's a, like a lot of us that can afford to go, and regardless of you know economic class, I just would like to. 
Does anyone know what I'm trying to say without being offensive? Yeah. Like, no. I just, I just want to be careful of, like, we're very, it's a difficult topic for, diversity is not easy, first off, but it's like, there's a lot of people that are very, very capable in the, um, or financially sound and underrepresented groups. So, like, just like with code, like, oh, underrepresented groups, we need to do beginner stuff so that they can get involved. Well, I mean, everyone needs beginner, not just underrepresented groups, right? So, I just want to be careful of, of just saying underrepresented groups, financial, um, and entry level. I just want to just be careful. Yeah. I totally understand. It's just, it's not about finances so much as it is about unpaid labor. Like it's a totally sort of a different concept of asking people to work for free versus because they can't afford it. Does that make sense? Like it's a sort of a diff no. Can someone explain this better than I can? Okay. Because everybody else has to work for free too, right? Yeah. Right. I think, yeah. And I think my take on it maybe is as a woman, um, making less money than my peers um, and also frequently being asked to perform emotional labor that's unpaid. I think there are many women who, not, not everyone, who are personally committing to not doing free work, which is different from getting paid or getting costs reimbursed to come to DrupalCon. And I think that's what Alana, Alana was trying to say. Um, but certainly I totally agree that um, class is not tied to other is your demographics related to this okay good good then you can go in front of me because I want to I want to steer off in a different direction sort of um I was just going to comment one thing I there is a blog post that changed the way I see the world um Astor Iden wrote several years ago uh, the title of which is something like the ethics of unpaid labor and open source software I really recommend reading it because it, it speaks a lot to this topic um about the, the intersection between um you know, underrepresented groups and um, and the open source community and the expectations we put on on speakers, on developers, contributors of all kinds um, in, in open source and, and how it's disproportionately difficult for underrepresented groups to do those kinds of free work and how it becomes a barrier, which is exactly the opposite of what we want to do, so. Yes, that's an awesome blog post and everyone should read it. One thing before, I know you've been yep, waiting yep, so patiently, but one thing I will say um, is I think to Kaleem's point, we're all doing free work. And, and one thing that we yeah. could take a look at is just the ethics of doing free work in general and to think critically about whether or not that's something that we want to do, right? And making sure that we're entering into it mindfully because all of us are here doing a lot of free work, um, both technically and emotionally. We good? Okay. So one opportunity that I found that we have available to us is, uh, so people have been asking me from the employer side, how do I get more diverse candidates? And rather than like saying, here's a bunch of resources, which is a you know, thing we can do, I was like, oh, we could also like say, stop by you know, our office hours and let's talk about things that you can do that um, either attracts a diverse pool of candidates or things that you're doing unconsciously that's excluding a diverse pool of candidates. Because, you know, I had just talked about things that I thought were really common knowledge, like, you know, if you make a whole bunch of stuff in your hiring description required that a woman is more likely to opt out than a man, I thought this was common knowledge, but apparently it's not. So I realized that, we, oh my gosh, there's so much more that we could do to educate people and to maybe break up some of the, you know, some of the Drupal agencies and whatnot are just so monolithically like white and male and we can, you know, maybe we can help them, you know, if they're willing to come to us and, you know, get that sort of mentoring. Someone from Pantheon stopped by the um, DDI, some, sorry, someone from a large agency. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, this one time I was talking with this person who worked at a shop and they were like, hey, uh, we're really having trouble getting people to come in. Um, and I had that conversation a couple of times this week um, about maybe just holding office hours and they seemed really interested. Awesome. Glad that we're like seeing the same thing. I have mixed feelings about that. Yeah, it's... Uh, there are people who consult for agencies for a living and we could keep a list of those and refer companies who want our free work to pay people who are actually trying to make a living and probably are much more skilled at it than, than we are. And that might serve them better. Um, so at least having that list available to people when they're like, please consult for free for us. Um, 
And we might need to explain to them why they might want to pay somebody for that work. Maybe that's like a bridge thing that we could actually serve. Um, if we decided to help people with those questions that they're having, maybe also if we kind of explain that to them, maybe we could ask for something in exchange, like they could um, give a ticket, they could like donate a ticket to an event that they're going to to a pool, and then we can help distribute that pool. Um, some kind of in-kind um, something. It just It's really hard for me. I never know when to help the world and when to be like, fuck you, pay me, because it's like I I don't know how to resolve that tangled mess in my head. So we should we should we should we should help people carefully. <laughs> yeah, I think I would agree with all of that, and I want to thank you for all the great work that you do. Um, on that on that discussion, something that came to my mind is that. Not sure if it's office hours or something, but uh, a way of allowing those who, like for example, like me, that kind of are really interested in diversity inclusion, but that don't, I don't consider myself being an expert to kind of have a low, lower barrier of entry, f entrance where maybe I wouldn't ask for, hey, support me in the hiring for my company, because that's something where I agree we should pay for, um, but support me in organizing a camp. Um, and yeah, to kind of, so to me, like the diversity of in inclusion channel feels like a very expert channel that I appreciate that it exists for the experts. But as somebody that doesn't interact with it regularly, um, I kind of reduce my interaction to to listen and uh. By the way, there are no diversity uh, <laughs> I, I just wanted to say that we have had times in the last year where we have done office hours. And one of the challenges is that, you know, maybe things would be different now, but there was a lot of people who used that to stop by and like argue against diversity and it was a it was a lot of emotional labor like when that happened so like it's pro it's different if people are coming to like say hey i'm interested and i want help um so i think it's a, a good idea uh it it, it is hard <laughs> to, to to have the same conversations a lot of times but thanks on the subject of it being a channel of experts um we we internally talk about this a lot and i and i talk about this when i run the meetings like we have an anonymous feedback like we want to lower that barrier of entry and we are not experts by any means and everything that i say i've probably learned in the last year being in that channel um and so i'm always open to you know what it is what are the things that are maybe intimidating and what are the things that are making it difficult for the average person to jump in and, and contribute and so um we're always open to that feedback, and it may not seem like that, but I'm saying it now on the record. So please let me know how it would be easier for you to help us help the community. Thank you. So I have two thoughts in my head. One is about um, making it easier for people to get involved, and the other one is about um, kind of going back to like finding um, speakers that aren't white guys. Um, so, the finding speakers who aren't white guys is probably shorter. So, I think part, when we go back to the all no white male panel pledge, and we, and there were people who were like, but, you know, that's all I have, I think just having them, like I would hope what comes out of that interaction is that they reflect on why they're resources are limited in that way. Um, so if it's like, oh, but we're, it was about a project and all our employees are like that, it's like, hmm, well, maybe you should think about that. So, uh, or like, we clearly have a contrib problem when the leaders of our contrib modules are really uniform and if we wanna have a panel and we can't, like why is that? So. You know, not like looking harder for the ones that are there, but trying to evaluate why structurally there aren't already more there. So like, it's kind of, like I don't know, 
I would hope that like the reflection and the trying to figure out how to change the way things are is what we want to actually happen, not that we want to have like better diverse panels. Mm -hmm. and they're related. Uh, and uh, Dasha, when you were saying um, you've been spending a lot of time in the channel listening, um, I think that's absolutely perfect. Uh, I think what happens uh, with new technology or new ideas that we get exposed to is at first we don't know how to talk about them because we don't know what words people use or how they use them or what they mean or what they mean one day like this and one day they mean a different thing like that. And we're having conversations maybe uh, for the first time ourselves, but we've never seen anybody talk about it before. And so I think, um, like somebody was saying, uh, Heather, maybe, you were like, oh, I thought everybody knew, um, you know, about the way different groups of people react to strict criteria. And I think because I've been in circles where we talk about that all the time, you know, you, you start feeling like everybody knows. And if you're not listening to people talk about that, you don't know these things. So Dasha, you're already like ahead of the game because like um, the first part of growing in this is surrounding yourself with people who are talking about it and watching them talk. Um, when working on uh, mentoring people to contrib contribute to CORE, um, we held CORE contribution hours in public and one of the things that we hoped was that people who were thinking about maybe doing it would watch us talk about it so they saw what was involved in it. And then they could then join the conversation later and they would feel more confident in doing so because they would see how we treat people who try and contribute. And it's like the same thing. If they can stay in the channel and watch how we talk to each other and talk to new people, they'll be more likely to be brave enough to participate because they see how other people get treated and then I, what I would hope is that those people would be like, oh, 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 I've heard this conversation six times. I know what these people say in response to this. And it's always like, well, here's our resource page. <laughs> or we have our meetings on Thursdays at whatever o'clock. And so people who are not experts yet but are hanging out in the channel are going to learn what these responses are. And then they're going to start being the people who give the responses. And I think there's a lot of parallels there. Uh, so sometimes that means that some people who are really experienced and may always answer questions may need to answer them really slowly to give other people who are newer uh, the opportunity to, to give those answers that they do feel confident about um, because they don't feel confident about all the things. So. Um, I just wanted to respond to the first thing Kathy said. I think it is also not I mean, it is important to, to try and work to change the structural things that are the reasons that you don't have a diverse group of people speaking at your conference. But it is also very, very important to actually have people up there on the stage who do not all look the same, identify the same, um, because uh, the first thing is because it um, can you know, give a little bit of courage to someone who's maybe afraid of speaking up, because say there are women and they don't want to be involved with a bunch of what perceived angry dudes who are very judgmental, um, or like I'm talking, I'm talking about myself here, because um, it was a it was a barrier for me for a long time. And then just seeing women contribute actually like it was like ah, oh, okay, maybe. Um, and I, I think the second reason is that also it helps uh, break down the assumptions that the audience has that you know uh, all web developers are white men, for example, um, which is also something like the the number of times that I got referred to is he, him. People could have just checked my gender and my profile in IRC back in the day and known that I preferred to like identify as female, but no, it was always XJM, he, XJM, he, XJM. So it was like, you know, just like making people stop and think, oh, it's not, the person I'm not look, talking to isn't necessarily white, isn't necessarily a man, isn't necessarily straight, isn't necessarily cis cisgender, just like it helps challenge people. So I, I actually do think it's actually important to make a proactive effort. Um, one of the thoughts that I have about, you know, that tension between, uh, you know, come be my token woman speaker, come be my token black speaker, that kind of thing, 
um, versus and, and the like sort of burden that puts on people something that it might have been Alana. Someone, someone recently, someone said, "Hey, I'm looking for speakers who aren't, you know, come from different underrepresented groups to speak at my event." And she just retreated it um, from the. Uh, so like that, that kind of thing. So it's like it's not, "Hey, you, you know, come be my token person." Um, it's like, "Are you interested in speaking at an event? I'm interested in seeing your session proposal." And so there's like a, it like a broader like asking the world, and, and again, that, that little thing, that little nudge that might be like, oh, well, I, could, I, could maybe, I could maybe do a session. Sure, that sounds cool. I'll talk to them. Um, for me, for individual speakers, I know a challenge that I had, and I think other people do, is like, what's significant enough to talk about? Um, and I think a couple things that help with that is like the shorter sessions at DrupalCon is it's a lot easier to say, I can talk for 15 or 20 minutes about this topic, and you know, someone else can ask questions and I can probably talk for five minutes in a response. Um, so I think that was a help and I think that's a good way to prompt people to say, hey, you did this cool thing that I haven't seen before in Drupal or, you know, you did this addition to this module that is, you know, pretty unique and new. And just thinking about what are some small things that people that you know have, have done that is really new and interesting that you haven't seen before and just having someone explain it uh, would be helpful. Um, so submitting those sorts of sessions to DrupalCon is a really good idea. Um, and then the other thing that happened at my company is one of the people in the technical leadership went, hey, I think this is a really good topic. I haven't seen anyone else propose anything on this. I think you can figure this out in three months. Um, and actually specifically went to someone and said, I know you're smart. I know you can figure this out. This is something that we do as a company and there's people here who can help you figure these tools out, build a presentation around, um, and submit that topic. And that got people at least in the mindset of thinking, hey, I can submit something. Maybe it doesn't get accepted. Um, but that even breaks down the barrier to the next conference and the next event. They have something that they can submit to another summit or another camp or something, um, as well as just being even more prepared to be like, oh, it's not that hard to write a proposal. You know, I can just put something out there and, and try again next time. Um, I just wanted to uh, share an, a tremendous appreciation for all of the work everybody has been doing as part of the DDI, DDNI group um, over the past couple of years and uh, to it continuing onwards. Um, speaking as one of the people who was on Kaleem's panel, um, I think the people in my position um, need to do more to mentor and encourage others to um, also feel comfortable to do that work and also to push employers to give staff time on the clock to do this so it's not falling back on them to spend their free time doing this open source work, free labor, versus, I don't know, spending time with their families, having a life outside of work. Um, so that's one thing I've been trying to push personally uh, in that direction. Yeah, I'm gonna speak to that a bit. Um, yeah, exactly, preach. Like we need people to be paying people to do that work. Um, something that I had never thought of until yesterday when Dario was at the leadership thing and he was saying, I need somebody to take over some of the work I do, right? Um, and I said, well, I have all these people who wanna help Right, and part of what I think helped me get into Drupal is the people I know, and the people that they know. And uh, it can be very difficult to, to get into that chain of the community. And um, so I guess I'm just putting this on the recording into the room. Um, I am very interested in finding ways for people in uh, DDI Contrib team, currently and future members, to take on leadership roles of like contrib roles that are maintaining modules that are initiative leads. Like the thing that is true is that there are already these people, they already know what they're doing, right? Like the DDI channel is not a bunch of people who are like, what's HTML, yeah. right? There's so many people like who are so skilled and for any number of reasons haven't found that pathway. And I, I mean, we've been talking about succession planning in the community and, and I know that that's a pain point in a lot of, uh, core and contrib and everywhere, it's a lot of pain. Um, 
but I don't feel comfortable saying, here's a group that's already struggling to fit in, and now they're gonna be maintaining a module till they die, right? <laughs> like, I already don't feel comfortable that that's already happening. Um, so anyway, I guess I just wanna continue that conversation and put this out there because I don't quite know how to get there, but I'm really excited about it. Hi, the work you're doing is amazing. Keep it up. Um, especially that resources list. If you haven't checked out that resources list on the DDI website, it is um, pretty extravagantly wonderful. Um, and that would be a great thing to give to any company that was like, how do we approach DDI? You could read a lot of things um, because, you know. Um, I wanted to share something about speaker travel and financial support. Uh, it's an idea, we have not done this, but it's something that we've kicked around and I just wanted to kind of share it with the group in case it was something that seemed like it would work in your ecosystem. Um, sorry, um, I'm Andrea Middleton. I, I'm uh, here uh, from the WordPress project, so I should have been more specific, thank you. Um, in our community programs, we do not pay speakers and we don't cover speaker travel, um, period. Um, for programmatic reasons. Um, if we ever were to do it, we would do it for diversity and inclusion reasons, um, but uh, there are multiple other reasons, which I'm happy to talk about uh, some other time <laughs> elaborately as to why we're not addressing it right now. But um, currently, one of the most inter interesting things to um, in this market or in this kind of area for the WordPress community is doing a matching program, like finding speakers that need financial support to be able to participate in the community um, or uh, as speakers, and then finding companies that are interested in funding that effort um, and basically creating some kind of like connection point where they can find each other and work things out that way. Um, again, it's been something that WordPress people have been kind of kicking around. It's not something that we're doing in official channels, um, but it's. It, I'm just kind of throwing it at the wall if it sticks for anybody, if it seems appealing, you know. You're the last one, David. Oh, thank you. Oh man, let me make, make this count. Um, I, I've talked a couple times on DDI Slack about unspent personal capital is, is hoarded capital and wasted capital in the community. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I, I've always struggled with how, how much, you know, how much personal capital I should, should just like, you know, let's just throw all the chips out and spend it on Can something. You say what you mean? Because I don't know. For what, you know, if people think of you as an influencer in some way, using your influence, not using your influence to better the lives of others, you're, you're kind of, you're being a dick. Yeah. Oh no, no. But I don't mean I don't mean in the sense that you know, like slaving for other people. But if you have a job rec that's open, if you're not trying to, if you as a participant in Drupal aren't doing your part to uh, to at least source underrepresented candidates, you're doing it. You know, you 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 are doing an act of bad in the community. That sort of thing. It and. So much of the work that we talked about has been sort of like the speaking truth to power type, you know, like the 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 prevailing against existing structures of oppression for URMs. I I would love to see an angle where we take where we do things like we help people get a promotion or a raise who are on, on you know we we help people interview for that next better job and get them out of the shitty job that they hate or we help people who want to get promoted to manager get promoted to manager and empower those who are in situations that they don't necessarily know how to navigate or improve, get better. Um, because I don't think we're going to see really substantial change in the Drupal community until we have more minorities in positions of influence on a regular basis. And I, those doors are very, very hard to open for many of them, be they women, be they people who don't speak amazing English, people who don't have a, a shit ton of contribution in code. Um, those doors are very, very hard to open, and I feel very fortunate to be where I am now, but I don't know if I could give a recipe to somebody else and say, hey, if you follow this, you know, your career will be successful. And I, I'm 
trying to think of ways to 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 pass the ladder back down and and I um yeah I would like I would like to see us do more of that and I'm not saying that everybody here is in a great place and I'm sure everybody could do uh, you know better career wise or or or, or Drupal contribution wise or whatever community wise but. For those of us who can pass the ladder down, I'd love to see us pass the ladder down more frequently and to more people. So what does pass the ladder down mean? Uh, I'm sorry. Um, to, you you, to, 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 to offer opportunities, to offer others the same opportunities that were given you to advance their careers. Let me give you a really concrete example of what David means. So um, in 2013, I had never spoken at a very large conference before, and David was selecting sessions at Bad Camp, and me and my best friend Lauren Bur 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 Burrows at the, it's now, so anyway, sorry, she married. Um, we got the opportunity to speak. That opportunity meant that more people got to know us that we didn't have access to before, Knowing those people got us better jobs. Now we're in good jobs. Like, you know, we can continue to rise up the ladder. But had David not taken a chance on two women and been like, here you go, here's the opportunity, we wouldn't, our careers were able to snowball from that. Oh, yeah, now I understand. That sounds way less mean than what he was saying. I'm oh, sorry. I should be more close about this. It's like, you have karma, therefore you're a dick if you're not. Well, no, I think if you accumulate karma. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> Um, we are out of time. We could lock ourselves in a room and do this forever. Um, I don't recommend it. I think it would be really disheartening after a while. Uh, one thing, um, I want to thank you all so much for coming. One thing I want to point out every time that we have these conversations is look around you. These are the other people who care enough to be here. So sometimes it feels like you're the only person who cares. We have a room full of people who made time today in a packed, wonderful schedule to be here and have these conversations. So thank you so much for coming. Um, and that's it. Let's get her to come with. Have her come down here and. At the okay. restaurant or at the 